Hi everyone, welcome back to Window Chats with Robin, the Instagram live podcast where I sit by my window and chat with very interesting people. Today we have Hillary, so I'm excited because it's her first time doing an Instagram live and guys, you never forget your first time, am I right? <laughs> A little fun joke for the morning. She's here, okay, I'm going to invite her in, here we go, it's happening. And hopefully it works. I have faith in this morning. I'm feeling like a good vibe. It's sunny. It's going to work. And maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But this is the fun thing with Instagram Live. It's a live podcast where you go, what will happen today? And guys, I don't know. I really don't know. I sent the invitation. Now I'm just rambling to myself. I'm going to try again. Send it out. Take two. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe we'll do it a different way. Let's do that. <laughs> Guys, by now you think I would have it down pat, but the struggle is still real on a daily basis. And this is, uh, it is what it is. So for those of you that are watching this, thank you for figuring out uh, that tech, tech is a struggle on a daily basis. Now, why isn't it working with Hillary? I don't know. I'm sending my request. Now, Hillary, are you on your phone? Are you having the most updated version of Instagram Live? Are you, hmm, what other reasons why wouldn't it work? No, I really just think you have to be on your phone and have a good internet connection. I have no idea at this point. Oh, you are, okay, oh, you're answering me, but it's delayed. Oh, this is so funny. Um, okay, what else can we try? Hmm, maybe I will start it again. Oh no! Oh my God! It worked. There we oh, go. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I kept setting send request, send request, oh my gosh. request, and, and, and I then it said I need to join in with anymore. Mike. So it's all good. This is so funny. Okay. Well, my headphones don't want to ever connect anymore, and then I look ridiculous. Thanks for doing this, by the way. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. I'm for so excited. Me. Okay. <laughs> you look cool. Thanks. Like, uh, you too. Oh well, thank you. I. It's, is it the pink? Is it? Yeah, I think pink and blue look great together. Red and blue look great together. Yeah, look at us. The blue backgrounds. There you go. Yeah. It's the standard. I mean, the old blue wall. <laughs> but can I ask you, all I own are blue t-shirts. So do you struggle? Because I like... Yeah. I don't know. Here's my black shirt. I don't know. I, like, I don't audition in this anymore. It's very bright. Yeah, look at this blue blazer I've got. I, it looks so I, weird against this, like, grayish blue wall, but... Whatever. I mean, I mean, you have the grayish blue. I don't think I could use that blue. That's frustrating. Yeah. So I'm going to get a new wall. There you go. Just going to get a new sheet off of Amazon. <laughs> it's going to be my exciting summer. But yeah. Thanks so much for doing this. Why did you agree? I'm always curious. Like, hey, who's this girl? You agree to everything. I said, oh. guys, for those of you who have not seen the self tape perils, I sent Hillary a message. I'm like, hey, you play accordion, you're cool, or something like that. Can you do, will you be in my web series, or something to that extent? I don't remember the word. During the pandemic, I mean, I had so much time on my hands. So, yeah, of course, I was happy to do that. <laughs> Why do you know how to play the accordion? Um, I was in a show, Once Upon a Time, uh, about Johnny Cash. It was a musical called The Ring of Fire. And they literally just strapped her an accordion on me and said, can you play this? And I was like, well, let me try. And I could play it because I just had to figure out the rhythm and the buttons. And then the keyboard's the same as a piano. So, yeah, I just learned. And then I performed it live on stage. <laughs> okay, look, I can figure out a piano. But if someone straps an accordion on me, I don't think I'll have the same success that you did. I, it, would, the struggle it just be is an extra a coordination thing you need to, otherwise it is playing the piano. Yeah. Really? Okay. But then what's the opening closing do? Well, that's how you, you provide the, uh, the power for the oh. sound. So if you just had it holding still and you press the keys, it would just sound like click, 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 click. But if you move it, you power the sound with the air movement. You know how like a bagpipe? Yeah, You're this is pushing. So this makes sense. I just never no. really thought it through. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we move the accordion is to provide the power. So it's not like an electric instrument. It's a acoustic instrument, you know? I'm picturing an electric version of an accordion. You know how <laughs> like just some kind of hardcore rocker just trying to make it cool. I would very much enjoy that. Yeah. I see, I see you rocking. Trying to make it cool. I liked how you said that. <laughs> it's a 
skill. It is a skill. It's just, it's the it's thing. It's not the coolest the instrument, but I love it. it <laughs> but it's, it's up there with banjo of yeah, the nerdiest instruments. <laughs> Your resume, like you just play all these instruments that no one else wants to learn. And I think that's <laughs> great. I really do. Yeah, guys, uh, anyone want someone that can play something random, go to Hillary. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> hey, it helped. that's a good resume. I always like to do what special skills can no one else do. Then I realized, yes. eh, I got to figure out better skills. So you know what? I'm really good at doing this. I'm really good at winking with like okay, actually full though, eyelid closed. <laughs> that's you could have been in the Handmaid's Tale. They wouldn't have had to paint your eyes shut. Yeah. You would have saved so much yeah, money on makeup. That character. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> You go into the audition, your eyes just permanently I should have sent him a tape, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I just want to see their reactions if you were to send him the tape. That would have been very fun for me. Uh, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> and no one else would have cared. But that's fun. Are there certain auditions that you're like, I wish I could have sent in a tape, not because I thought I would book it, just because I think it would have been really fun to try? Like... Uh, certain auditions for things I'm already auditioning for or certain shows that I wish I could have been in. Yeah, certain shows that you like, you know, you won't really have a chance looking for a big name, but yeah. you kind of want to throw your name in the mix because why not? Oh, of course. Yeah, all the time. I mean, yeah, Working Moms, Kim's Convenience, Baroness Von Sketch when it was on, I, I was like, oh my God, I just want to be in one of those sketches so badly. But yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, just to have even that one liner that kind of sets, you know, that, uh, it's yeah. so hard to play those straight characters though. That's what <laughs> I find. Like, uh, I always want to be the funny person, not the person that has to bring the joke down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the person who's usually, you know, the, the straight one, uh, or usually it's the, you call it actually the wavy line person who's trying to understand the world is the point, the point of view of the audience. Right. So there's that joy of knowing that you are bringing the audience in um, by being that person. But <clears throat> I know it's fun to be the goofy one. <laughs> I'm the I love, that's such a positive way to say it. Yeah, you're the relatable one in the sketch. I never mm -hmm. thought of that. Yeah. Maybe because I, yeah. Okay, I like that. I so if I ever I have to say that. Broke up. <laughs> but I, I did wake up earlier. <laughs> I like the Ghostbusters cup. Oh, yeah. This is uh, from my husband's childhood. Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> yeah that, it also matches with your shirt oh even if you God. just woke up there is coordination <laughs> happening and i appreciate that <laughs> it's hard to match i used to love matching as a child i'd have all my matching tracksuits i say this it's fresh in my mind it was my sister's birthday the other day and we watched those home movies where you go dear god we're all dressed the same why were we bullied at school now i understand uh, like I used to wear things. a lot of like rainbow and tie dye and that sort of thing in the early nineties, you know, <laughs> lots of fluorescent cool. colors. Tie dye was so cool. You got, yeah, I got my tie dye shirt. I paid a ton of money for this one. I could have done it myself, but I bought this cause look at all the fun colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, tie dye. Yeah. Although I think it's coming back. I don't know. Oh, for sure. I've seen a lot of kids and adults. Yeah. Wearing tie dye. And I, I, I think never... it's also a thing people did during the pandemic, you know? What am I gonna do today? Let's dye our clothes. Let's get rid of these white shirts and make them more interesting. <laughs> that would help. I don't. There's a lot of white shirts I don't like anymore. Huh? I'm gonna start a tie dye project and be like, "This is Hillary's fault." Hey, the pixies um, can just like blend right in with. This is the yellow part of the tie dye. <laughs> oddly, only yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are great ideas. This is why I have the chats. I like to generate comedy. Uh, but okay, Hillary, here's a fun fact. As I was going through the, the things you sent me yesterday, and I was trying to remember where I first met you. And I don't know if you know this, but you were actually my music director at Second City for one oh, class. Cool. Yeah. And it was really funny because just like with every music class, no one wanted to be there. I love it. I love music and like musical comedy is my favorite thing, but everyone else in the class People was freaking out. Scared shitless, yeah. Freaking yeah. out. I'm like, whoa. God. Like, and you just kind of put everyone at ease. I'm like, this girl, she's cool. She's cool. I like that. Thanks. So you helped a lot of people get over their fear of singing. I was- Good, good. I mean, yeah, Im improvised singing is, is terrifying for singers too. For people who are professional singers, it's also terrifying to sing on the spot because 
there's a different function almost uh, when you're singing just random things as opposed to something that you've planned and rehearsed. So, yeah, it's, it's true. a whole, whole bag of tricks. So you've got to really just let it go and let the let the flaws come out and let the uh, uh, croaks come out. <laughs> like my, my, my voice this morning, yeah. Uh, no, this is uh, a character choice. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very respectful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that meant. I don't know why it's respectful. I just said it and I judge myself accordingly. There you go. My husband's but, oh. having a meeting in the next room. So if you hear a man's voice, that's, that's happening. So it's mine and there's an ambulance now and I wanted yeah. to leave the window open. <laughs> and normally you don't hear it when I have my headphones on, but they don't want to connect. So classic technology. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is it though? <laughs> when an ambulance goes by, I'm always like, I hope you're okay. I don't know who I just yell at someone I'm like, hang in yeah. there, like it's going to help them. Yeah, hopefully yeah. it's, yeah, you always hope it's the the least, yeah, violent thing that's happened. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> it's just, you know, false alarm or something, you know, or some, some small thing. But yeah, it can be bad, especially these days. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting yeah. dark. Yeah, yeah we're, we're getting real dark. Yeah. <laughs> that's how have you been lately? I haven't talked to you for... Um, oh, I know. I think this is the best way to talk. I'm like, okay, here's the thing. I remember you from Yes, Second City, but also we auditioned for the same things. Oh, for time. sure. We look right like near sisters, the end. And I'm just, I'm looking now and I see it, but then you chopped off your hair. I'm like, oh, I didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got the pandemic hair of like not castable. It's so long to a point where I'm just, I'm scared to cut it. Um, because hey, like Rapunzel, don't... they can make a new film and you could be out for it. Yeah, so. that's... That's what's going to happen. I'm waiting for the one roll of, we want a natural, authentic girl, brunette, long hair. That's what we need, like natural hair. <laughs> That's why I've been growing it for a year and a half. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Probably longer. Uh, you well, know. it looks good. It looks healthy, so. That's great. Oh, does it? Oh, well, thank yeah. you. My hair is also an actor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, didn't you, did you chop your own hair off? Yeah, a few times. <laughs> yeah, how do you, I'm how do, you do that? Um, I like it a little bit shorter than this. I like it more like like there. But um, yeah, I just, you know, I was like, what the hell? I'm not going to be out in public anytime soon. But if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. My hair grows really fast. Um, and it looked really terrible in the back, but my husband fixed it. So I was lucky that he is good at making straight lines. He passed cutting in kindergarten, whereas I don't know if I did. So okay. no, you say that. Look, uh, my husband's hair is a thing. We've discussed it. I, I didn't even know he had curls. It is to a point where if he got a haircut, I would not recognize him. But for our marriage sake, we do not want to cut each other's hair because I, I just I don't trust yeah. it. And I, I don't know. I, so I admire that you there was like help and that you had your husband doing your thing. I, I just like the hair. Oh. No. Okay. How long have you two been married, man? Uh, well, uh, coming up, how, well, actually, oh, no, we had it. Whoops. Our anniversary. <laughs> it's over six years now. Uh, that's funny. How about yeah. you guys? So this August 25th will be nine years. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So, as you know, when you're married for a long time, there are like, yeah, there's this, this happens a lot, you know, and uh, living together during a pandemic, not easy. Not easy for anyone, but when you're married to someone for a long time, yeah, certainly not easy. But you learn, you learn more about yourself and more about the other person. For I sure. learned so much, and you didn't know this. Okay, love grows and uh, and then grows even bigger. You know. <laughs> oh my god! I know if he's yeah. in a meeting, but I'm playing for this for him afterwards. Like, look, it's not just us. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Anybody who says, oh, it was so easy. We got along so well the whole time. Don't know why all those other couples have this problem. Like, fuck you. Can I swear on this? And <laughs> uh, yeah, that's You're right. lying or you are you haven't been in a long relationship with someone because when you're in a relationship with someone for a long time, there's there's challenges, you know? I would say, it, or you don't live downtown and you have space to have your own space. That's oh, what I would That's say. another yeah. huge thing, for yeah. sure. Yeah, not this little. So yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm condo. in the office now. You can yeah. be in the kitchen for your meeting. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. Did you change your last name though? Like legally? Did you? So my last name is Hart. 
Okay. Uh, but I changed it legally when I was 18, oh. long before I was even. What? Then. This was not, okay, this isn't even yeah, part of what I thought. Yeah, this planned. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh my gosh, yeah. what are we doing with this knowledge, okay? So my, um, my name growing up was Yuremko. That's my family's name. And I changed it when I was 18. Um, my Nana's name is Hart. So my mom's mom is June Hart. She's still alive. She's 94 years old. And my, my papa Ron is 96. They're uh, adorable and living in Saskatoon. And I changed my name because I was like, you know what, this Yuremko, there was a thousands of, not thousands, but there was a lot of Yuremkos where I grew up in York really? oh. Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's a very common Ukrainian name. Um, and also I just had a lot of second and third cousins and that sort of thing. And people would spell it wrong in the newspapers. Every time I was in a music festival or something, people would say it, say it wrong and spell it wrong. And I was just like, you know what? Wouldn't it be nice if my name was Hillary Hart? Oh, that would just be so simple and, and pretty and, and, you know, easy to spell. And, and then I was like, what about Hillary June Hart? Because then I can have more of my Nana's name. And my middle name was always June, um, Hillary June Yuremko. And then I was like, you know, if I get married someday and I change my name, um, it's the same deal. Like women change their names all the time. Um, but then I didn't change my name when I got married. <laughs> my husband's name is McFarlane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's see, But yeah. maybe the fact you were related to Seth McFarlane, you could have gotten some roles. I, don't I mean, maybe I should have, but like, yeah. No, I do. Yeah. It's such a, that's why it's such a cool name. And I thought, I really don't think she changed her name. And I'm glad that you didn't because it's such a cool stage name. To a point Thank where you. Like, that is. Yeah, it's cool. very like Broadway, baby. <laughs> I just or, see it in the lights. Okay. Yeah, or Roxy Hart, Hillary June Hart. Yeah, it's very much a wannabe uh, in the glitter and glam name. I love it. <laughs> Oh my God. So when you are in Chicago, I'll be like, we discussed this, this happened, we put out the vibes. Okay. Also, <laughs> Chicago is an awesome musical. As much as it is a deeply disturbing musical, it is incredible. It oh, it's very fun. It's mm -hmm. one of my yeah favorite ones to sing and, and play around with. I like Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and I like Classic. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. I put Do Not Disturb on on my phone, but there's still Oh, no, that's fine. Again, the fact, okay, here's the thing. The fact that you read the instructions already was impressive. I send them. No one reads them. It goes awry. People and don't so read instructions. I have a bunch of students sending me um, videos for a piano recital I'm hosting later this week online. And I edit them all together, and then I share it over Zoom. And, yeah, people don't follow instructions ever. <laughs> Even though this is my third online recital, because this is how long this pandemic has been. Ugh. Anyways, I don't care that the kids made mistakes or the parents made mistakes. I'm so glad they just freaking did it. You know, yeah. they played and they stuck to practicing and playing throughout this pandemic. So kudos to them because it's been hard. And I, I can't even imagine how much harder this pandemic would be with children at home all the time while you're working. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I know. That's why I'm, I've just said to my husband, I'm like, okay, cool. I think we're okay. I think it's just us. We'll figure out whatever yeah. our issues are. Yeah. And just be great. Like my, I literally, I got a new niece, nephew. Wow. I'm struggling with people. Nephew a couple days ago. And I go, wow, they have three oh. kids now. Whoa. Yeah. That's so many. And they're all under five. Holy yeah. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. A lot. And they're yeah. in Rochester. So I'm like, okay, virtual hugs. Uh, this is how I hug. It's like a... Uh, what I do yeah <laughs> that makes more sense more of an encompass yeah. <laughs> distance tug uh, hmm. yeah but I am excited to be going home and give some real hugs yes this so I summer. the fact that you're from Saskatchewan I think is so cool I've never met oh, anyone thanks. from Saskatchewan thanks but you I have mean, there's only like like friendly vibe I don't know it's a war I'm, I don't know yeah, there's only about like a million people in the whole province. It's a giant rectangle, but only so many people live in certain parts of it. Um, and yeah, people are, are pretty friendly there. And uh, I mean, there's there's problems there too. But uh, for the most part, the uh, the friendly vibe that you get when you're in Saskatchewan and the feeling of, for me, home is amazing. And I love the, the grand open prairies and the, you know, driving by the canola and the, the wheat fields and the cows and everything. Yeah, I can't wait to be home. 
And of course my family. Yeah, I miss my, my parents. Um, can't wait to have them and my nieces and nephews. I have four. Whoa. A little more spread out than, than your nieces and nephews or whatever, nieces, nephews. Whatever. Yeah, they're both, the combo. Yeah. The combo, yeah, the combo. Yeah, mine are um, going to be 12, um, 10, oh, I'm going to mess this up, 6, and I think 4 is the youngest. So, or maybe she's 3. Oh, my gosh. See, the pandemic messes up. But at up least my... it's not like the one was 12 and then the rest are 3, 2, 1, and you go, oh, was the first one a mistake? That kind of age gap, and it's uncomfortable. Okay. No, they are all planned. That's, yeah. That was funny in my yeah. head. Um, yeah. yeah. They were all planned for sure. They wanted four four kids and a dog, and they got it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is just it's so funny. That to me used to be the typical family size, and now I just think because Toronto's getting smaller, I don't think you can have more than two. Where I'm gonna put them. Where would I put them in here? One here, <laughs> one here, one here, one here, and one. You have to sleep in this shoe box. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, but wait. Would you would you go live in Saskatchewan, or would you stay in Toronto? What do you mean if I had like would you would you move back if you had a family? Is that um it would all depends. There's there's so many uh variables. I think we but... should discuss this right now. This is not a personal <laughs> question. There's so many variables. Uh, my husband's career and my career um yeah, that makes more fit sense. in with all of that. Um and if we couldn't have any work in Saskatchewan then that would not be great. Um but um, we do own our condo, so if we sold it and then moved to Saskatchewan, maybe we could afford a house, right? So there's, and be close to the family. So there's always pros and cons to the decision to do such a thing. But yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> You're an adult, though, you own something. Uh, that's we are very fortunate, yeah, that we've got this place. It's not very big, um, but it's our little bit of real estate in downtown Toronto, yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's gold. It's probably gone up, and I don't know. I'm trying to pretend I know about real estate as we're looking, and we go, dear God, everything is so expensive. We're just going to rent. Uh, it's an adult decision that I'm not regretting. <laughs> hey, it's it makes sense in this day and age to rent, for sure. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You're making me feel better about my life choices right now. This, oh. We should have done this sooner. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I need some uh, positive affirmation. I think everybody's um, biggest critic is themselves, you know? Oh, for most yeah. people, you know? Definitely. Yeah. And uh, we should be easier on ourselves, especially with this career choice that we, we chose. Um, a lot of people don't understand how, how freaking hard it is, you know, how exhausting it is. And mm -hmm. yeah, people will say like, oh, yeah, you have to get ready for all the rejection. Yeah, okay. But then when you actually do experience all the m multiple soft tapes that you send in, et cetera, all, you know, all the Zoom calls and then you don't book, it feels like you're a piece of shit after a while, you know? <laughs> it's exhausting. Exhausting. especially when you have those and you go oh yeah that i'm gonna hear back and you go okay oh, been yeah. a couple weeks been a mm -hmm. okay, yeah, there's, okay. A, there's a lot of those too where you're like oh man i just nailed that call back oh my god and like i got my i got oh good they they want to know my availability great i'm available i'm uh, available nothing else happening that day and then the day no. passes and i'm like no nope. uh okay guess i didn't book that one <laughs> When yeah. you're, I've never heard of on hold until this profession. This is the most absurd thing. Book off the days. You're on yeah. hold. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a crazy profession. And uh, yeah, it takes a lot of, um, you have to be, you know, tough, tough skin, but you have to be extremely vulnerable at the same time. So that's yeah. why it's a balancing act. And I, uh, you have to be a bit of a narcissist too in terms of you have to get used to like seeing your own face all the time and be like oh, is my hair good is this you know and like some people can't stand that but it's like it's part of the profession <sighs> you did oh my gosh thank you you did this incredible photo shoot where I'm like I don't know who this girl is right now but you just did these characters oh that was Halloween <laughs> there was a, that's what it, okay it doesn't matter what it was I'm just like she is everything and oh this thanks. is like Oh, I man. felt like you were sending out cast me vibes and I oh, love this. Thanks. I would never, I say I wouldn't do it. And then I think I post photos. Every I now and then. so many messages because of those photos. <laughs> they were awesome. <laughs> thanks. Oh. Yeah. On my Instagram, if you check out my Instagram, check there's it out. photos of me playing all these different characters like Madonna and like poison Ivy, like in a lingerie outfit. And I know what there's... did your husband say? Young lady. Okay. That's oh, he was behind the camera. <laughs> Yeah, so he's, oh, he's that's not so fun. prudish at all. Um, and 
Yeah, there was like I was I was compost oh or, or not compost. I was recycling. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's my least favorite chore to do. Uh, yeah, I I was having fun because I love dressing up. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I've never done like cosplay or like you know those cosplay conventions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I admire those people who. Oh my God! They make their own costumes. Some of them, and they can, or they put together the most amazing replicas of so many famous characters, or they create characters. And yeah, it's a lot of work, and I, I don't think I could do it all the time. But I did it for Halloween because I sure missed Halloween parties and figuring out my costume and going. And sometimes I'll, I'll wear like two different costumes one year. One to this party, one to that party. And if I don't have a party I'm invited to, I'll just go out and pretend that I'm invited to something. <laughs> yeah. So that I, I love work. that you have multiple costumes. I, I think the struggle every time we have a friend that always does a Halloween party, I, I guess we'll do face makeup, I guess. But that yeah. being said, sometimes the face makeup looks so cool that people think we spent hours on it. I'm like, guys, this took five minutes. But yeah, we made a lot of effort. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, this was exhausting. Oh, face makeup is a whole skill for sure. Yeah, and also it's a skill to keep it on all night, you know? Yeah, that's the worst part. <laughs> Touch your face and you're like, oh, right, there goes half of my my, my yeah. reptile or <laughs> whatever you are. <laughs> yeah. I love... I, I now you're just a green you, blob. Did you have multiple wedding dresses? Or are you that kind of person that just like multiple... Ch I'm curious, like you have multiple costumes. How, when I how got, far does it go? Okay. When I got married, I just had one. But, <laughs> but it was the secondhand dress that was gorgeous i was really lucky yeah but uh, awesome. i i do have a like a, a tickle chunk reference to mr dress up days for those who are as old as me um i have like wait was it of... actually called a tickle trunk it was called a tickle trunk that yeah. is disturbing Whoa. i know <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god That's what all adults say <laughs> but when i was a kid i was like a tickle trunk yay <laughs> anyways i have okay. a lot of costumes and I play with them or use them for um, cackle comedy productions. My um, sketch comedy film company that we've filmed so many silly things. And you just never know when you need, you know, a mustache or you need some police hats or, you know, an apron or, yeah. It's fun to I'm have not, those I'm not you. I started a collection, but it only, the only space I have is for something under the bed. And I go, um, okay, cool. It's the stuff under the bed that's in that little container that goes storage under the bed. There's a lot. And I never think I'm going to need it. As I'm going to get rid of it, I end up needing it for something else. And I go, Ugh, that's why I'm a hoarder. That's what yeah. happens. All right. We have a, we have, we're lucky we have a storage locker. Uh, it's not very big. Uh, and when we first moved in, it was like maybe a third full. And now <laughs> we're touching the ceiling with our boxes and storage bins. And so if I really need something, I have to go through all of that and take everything out and hopefully not die from something heavy falling on me. And so if I feel like, you know, I don't know if I really need that or not, I'll just like, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna even bother. It's not going to be easy to find or handy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. But I love what we what did you use for cackle comedy that last one I saw with the witches and the diva cups, which was hilarious. But, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that was in one of the, that was a festival pick or something? What was? Yeah, that was in the uh, Great Canadian Sketch Comedy Film Festival. And there's a red block and a blue block. Like there was two sections of the festival. And that one was chosen for the blue block. And we ended up winning Audience Choice Award for that one, which was pretty cool. I was like, yay, people enjoyed it. It was uh, really cool. And we had another sketch that was in the red block uh, that was called Period Sex. Yes. <laughs> that which sounds gnarly, but when you watch it, you realize it's something different than what it sounds like. <laughs> I like that. That's enticing. How can how can people watching this live find your material, Hillary? Well, if you wanted to even check out on Instagram, since we're already on Instagram, just look at um, Cackle Comedy Productions Instagram, and then there's a link to the YouTube channel in the bio. Um, then there's also a website. I have a website, Hillary June Hart. Dot .ca and then slash cackle comedy productions all of the videos are listed there and information about all the festivals we've done and that sort of thing yeah there you go check it out yeah way to plug i like it
Uh, your website also is great. Uh, I know there's a lot of actors that wonder if they should do websites, and then I see websites like yours, and I go, yes, people should. Oh. It's just easier, right? Thanks. Here's my name. Yeah. Look it up. Here's my stuff. Thanks. I feel like I need to update it, but um, you know, everybody needs to update their websites. I I'm never gonna be that person who has like a live blog on my website because I'm never gonna care that you much. You say that, but I like <laughs> to pretend. I literally, I actually updated it the other day because I wanted to share a video. I'm putting it in my blog. Um, yeah. So I wrote one sentence and I called it a blog. It was great. It Good. was empowering. Yeah. I, I have but I can't. I don't know how everyone that. does it. Yeah. On yeah. I have friends too. who are great at all of that and. Good for you if you, if that's your thing and you can do it. But for me personally, I just I would not ever stay updated. And then it would be like, check out this week's new thing, and it would be from like two years ago. <laughs> you know? so. Oh my god, that's so funny. No, but um, you also said, wait, are you gonna update because you got new headshots? Is that the shot that you sent me? Isn't the new one, right? You have no, no, that's that's an older one from uh, LV Imagery uh, that oh. I had like five, six years, no, two, 2015 is when I had those, my last headshots professionally done. So Not it's but been still, time. Yeah, you look the same though. Good. You actually look the same. Thank you. I think they look great and they're fantastic headshots, but I just thought, you know what? I'm, I'm probably not going to get headshots for a while yet. Like I'll, I'll take another little break till I'm like, you know, 40 or something. Um, so I figured now I'll get some real good ones, some real professional ones. And I've been working out. So I was, like, I was gonna say, I'm like, as I'm looking at your face, you look a little slimmer. Okay, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I've been eating healthy and working out and... Oh, you're you the worst person. No one likes you during the pandemic. You're yeah, actually I'm using sure. the time yeah. wisely. You know what, Hillary? <laughs> Nobody cares. I what are you, a vegan exactly. that does CrossFit? No one cares, okay? Yeah, just at home with my dumbbells. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm that person who's really annoyed. Oh, yes. Yeah. You were doing an accordion workout in some video I saw. It was yeah, that so was, funny. That was early pandemic days. Uh, yep. That was so <laughs> funny. Your comedy resonates with me. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right before the pandemic, I started this new like workout program with like weightlifting and stuff. And then I was like, damn it, I can't go to the gym now. So then I used my amps and my accordion. And then a friend of mine lent me her weights because lifting accordions is really awkward and not the most comfortable thing. Um, okay. even, and then she moved away and then I ended up like meeting up with some like Russian man in, a, in an alley or a, probably in a parking lot <laughs> and like buying some weights from Kijiji. You it's buy hard to weight. find weights. It, is, it was pandemic. hard. There was a huge thing. Yeah. That like back, I think at the start of the pandemic, that was the version of people trying to get a vaccine now. It was, where are the weights? Yeah. You know? There's so many things like that, yeah. I think we borrowed weights from someone, but okay, they're kind of just sitting there. Uh, I, I, I get just... on our floor, so <laughs> it is what it is, okay. No judgment. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I appreciate that, yeah. yeah. I, so I, I realized as I get the breakdowns, what they're looking for, I'm average body. That is, that is what I am. Doesn't look too fit. I'm like, okay, I will, that is, so, <laughs> that's so, so my worry is if I get fit, will I lose those roles? I, I'm not getting them, but will I lose those auditions? Yeah, so, I know what you mean. It's a tricky thing of like, where do I fit in in this industry? Because I, I'll never look like this certain, you know, I will never look like the skinny model, um, you know, that long lean look, because that's not my body type. Because you cut and your hair. <laughs> Is that my hair type? I'm mean? joking. I'm like the, the models have <laughs> the so long cute. hair. I'm totally right totally now. joking. <laughs> yeah. And, but uh, yeah, it's like, am I, do I want to look like a bodybuilder either? Like that, that would take so much work as well. Um, or, you know, just my average build, my average body. Like uh, I want people of all different body types and shapes to be cast in multiple different things. Like why does it have to be a certain, you know, look? So. I want to look good. That's my, my goal. Always when I'm like working out, I'm like, I want to be healthy and I want to look good. That's why I'm working out. And I feel better after I do it. I feel like, ah, like I've released all these endorphins and that sort of thing. And I feel like I've accomplished something, you know, I've done something that I haven't failed at. I've, you know, my muscles are failing as I'm trying to lift a heavy weight, but work to failure. That's how you do it. it. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's how you build them up. And I think, this pandemic's been hard for everyone of, you know, trying to get things done or, or not having the work that you used to have 
prior to the pandemic. I haven't been music directing since, yeah, beginning of March 2020. Um, and doing all these auditions and whatnot is, as I mentioned earlier, is hard for the soul <laughs> to do them over and over and put your, your energy and your heart into it when you're like, I don't know if I'm going to even book this and I'm not getting paid to do this right now. I'm just gambling, you know, here trying to book something. And that, yeah, feeling of failure over and over again sucks. So you got to find what makes you feel good. See, I like to think you're getting the audition, so you're not technically failing. You're right. I they recognize be. that you might be able to do it. Yeah. Um, you're I'd right. Like to get to a point where they rec where I actually know how to audition, and it's like we acknowledge, we appreciate that you auditioned, and you get a call back. Versus yeah. like, yeah, we think you can do it, but you know, actually audition better so we can call you back kind of thing. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. That's my totally. And I know how hard it must, like, I'm not that I've ever been a professional casting director, but I, I know hard. from what I've heard and experienced and seen that it's so hard for casting because they get, sometimes they get an amazing amount of awesome audition tapes and they just have to fit what what works for their look in that mm -hmm. particular spot, what the clients want, um, yeah. you know, what kind of look they want, etc. So, there's so much that's out of our control. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. that, that I can't imagine having to call that look. What we were talking before too, when people don't follow instructions and it's very specific. Yeah. And I would just hate, and that's why I understand a lot of casting directors complain people don't read, and that's why, I'd like, even if it's not. Even if it's not the audition tape that resonates, I want you to know that I can read instructions because they, they wrote them, right? Like this is, okay, do this thing for your slate. Do this for the shot. And I'm like, that's just, I don't know, follow instructions, people. That's, <laughs> and I say that. People and don't like, like to read. Uh, my husband is a professor and I, uh, I've heard him say how many times of how many emails he gets from students saying like, how do I do this? Or can you give me an example? And it's like the instructions right away say, here is an example of what you should do. <laughs> the first sentence of the instructions. And they just didn't want to read. It's interesting, though, because sometimes, and again, look, I'm guilty of not reading, too, because my eyes just skim over it. And there's always, there's sometimes a certain part of an email, and I just don't, my eyes just don't even take it in. I think, you know, it's part of our culture now because we, we read so many things all the time. If you're thinking about, you know, all of our social media or all the things we scan over over the internet, we don't necessarily read every word of an article. We are, yeah. We've all become scanners, you know, where we skim through. But when it comes to instructions, it is important to do the first skim through, but then go back and actually, like, absorb the information yeah. of what you're supposed to do yeah it's so funny i'm picturing now sometimes i like to test social media and so i write whatever funny caption and then i write something different at the bottom and again it's i've been testing it out because it's fun for me people don't read it so it's great it's just mm -hmm. like i can write anything in the second half after an instagram post and no one will read it and it's so <laughs> fun for me i don't know why i have no idea why it's just such a fun thing for me i'm like just gonna just gonna write random things see what happens maybe two people read it once and I thought oh oh my gosh thank you for reading I'm so proud of you like this was a random test that's not a test so <laughs> that is it's what I'm doing with my spare time I'm doing these and I'm uh, testing people's reading skills so hey go. good for you that's this is awesome <laughs> there, there's no prize to be won this is more of a, a social experiment that I've now shared with you and with the people watching so there you go <laughs> you're a good talker though you know like yeah, some people are very shy and they don't like to talk. I I like to do a little bit of both. And I like to listen sometimes. Um, I don't. I'm not usually the one who likes to start conversations though. And you're really good at that. You're really good at like prompting new things and yeah. It's a it's a whole skill set. Like there's some people who could be talk show hosts and there's some people who yeah. So you say that, good. but I cannot audition to be a talk show host. It is very hard for me. Cause I'm like, look, I don't know what you want me to talk about. I don't know, just watch what I've done. And there you go, I've done that here. Yeah. Like, no, like I don't, when I have to like interview people that I know, I'm like, it's different. I don't interview people I know. And in, in the sense of like my husband, I'm like, I don't know. Hello, sir, you've been sitting with me all day. Let's talk. <laughs> uh, it, it didn't, doesn't work. Uh, well, I mean like Stephen Colbert, yeah. Would sometimes just break into conversation with his wife while they were, yeah, filming at home and, and to make it work, yeah. 
There you go. Actually, that will be my homework. I will not let my husband know. I don't think he's watching this now because he's on, in a meeting. And I'll just like randomly interview him through the day. But in an interview, I was like, uh, excuse me, sir. I, like, I won't even acknowledge that I know him. Uh, it seems here we have a, I don't know the words yet. I can't. <laughs> no, 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 no. Obviously, you have to hold a fake mic. I don't know if I would do it like thumbs out or thumbs in, but there has to be a fake mic here. So, there you go. Yeah. I, what does your husband do, may I ask? Oh, you can ask. I won't tell. No, he's a, he's a lawyer. Oh, nice. And you also do physiotherapy, right? Oh, my gosh. You've looked me up. I have. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of just put out, like, you know when people have to describe themselves, like, what do you do? And I go, here's seven words of what I do. I don't know. Today, I'm a host. Tomorrow, I might be a physio. But, yes, I, I have a physiotherapist. Oh, that's awesome that you do Oh, thanks. That. Cool. Yeah. I get injured a lot. It helps. So, there you go. Do you know of, yeah, all the different exercises? Am I going to have to assess you? I, I, I just, My someone came to, they messaged, they called me the other day. I have low back pain. I go, okay. <laughs> I have to physically assess you and uh, it's not safe. <laughs> so, no. Uh, it's hard. It's hard though because I always want to help people. And then when they tell me it online, I'm getting creative at figuring out how to diagnose them. But it's not the same. You can't really do that. So. No, yeah. oh, I can I can only imagine how hard it is to do that over video. I mean, and, and Hillary, you're upset, right? Because you go, well, damn it, I've had this neck pain. It's the only reason I came on, Robin. I mean, <laughs> Come on. If you could just tell me what to do or do a treatment virtually, I'd be like, okay, cool. I'm going to take you by the neck. This is also you know what? I just, I just want to be touched. I just want somebody to just grab my muscles and go, you know. I miss going oh. to a massage clinic. I, I would go maybe me once too. a year, but I miss that once a year. I miss the whole when people go, you have a lot of tension. I go, I know. Yeah. This is oh, me too. Yeah. a lot of stress. A lot. Yeah. There's a lot going on in my head. It goes to my shoulders, sometimes the back. Let's figure this out as a group and touch. So I don't say it like that. That seems yeah. weird. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what's happening today. Uh, I get really, oh, that would be so confusing. Oh, I wouldn't do that to someone, but that would be hilarious. Oh, God. I'm picturing new ideas. This is what happens. I always generate sketch ideas that I never get to, but. Yeah, there you go. That's the thing. And you know what? I think it's good to do that. Because uh, at first I was like, I gotta write everything down. I need to have, I have to film all these ideas. It's like, no, sometimes some ideas can come and go and you just let them, let them snowball and build or let them just float away. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Exactly. I have to, I wrote down all the stuff that you sent me because I want to promote you accordingly because you were also doing a really cool film. Oh, yes. This ah. is so cool. Okay. So with the crew of eight people, I'm reading this because I don't want to mess it up. The short, you sh okay, the short film, Sound of Space, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay. Got so it. you shot it in one day in an escape room in Toronto. Yes. A Please space explain this more. Room. Fascinating. Yeah. You play a space captain. Please. Yes. A captain of a cargo ship. And in in space in a spaceship and uh the producer and director writer tyler morgan sent me the script and said would you be interested in playing this role and i was like oh my god this is this looks so much fun but how are you gonna film it <laughs> you know are we gonna have some like green screen you know cardboard boxes <laughs> like what <laughs> How is this going to be done? Because it's oh. an indie production. So like, I didn't imagine a Star Trek set. But it looks like a Star Trek set. It's amazing. This um, this escape room called Proxima Command, I think it's called, um, is at Christie and DuPont. And, of course, they haven't had any business because of the pandemic. Um, they have these, this amazing room with all these screens and buttons and cool lights. And it looks like, yeah. A space movie, so. And then on top of that, the... Just rented um, the room or the space for the day? Yeah, exactly. And the the guy who runs the, the place, um, uh, I don't know if he's the owner or if he just helps run it. His name is Mike. He was there the whole day, so excited, and helping out with, like, uh, making sure the buttons are working and that sort of thing. And the screens were on the right screen for when we needed it. And he was so excited to have us there. And it's great promotion for his space, too. Yep. So, yeah, it worked out really well. And there was an amazing um, director of photography. Um, whew, his name, his name is Raymond. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and, a cool name. Yeah. I and Raymond. 
he had uh, a crew of, of these, uh, these two guys that he works with all the time. Oh, one was a gaffer, one was the first AC, um, working on the, the focus and the lighting and everything. And they just had this vibe, like they've been working together for 17 years. Like they just that. knew, they knew each other's um, commands immediately, or his commands, because he was the one telling them, oh, up, 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 down, 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 that sort of thing. And they just could read each other's minds, which was really cool. That makes such a difference when you have that crew that just connects like that. Oh, that's yes. so exciting. And it was so nice. And I just hadn't been on set for forever. Oh, for sure. And so it was just so nice to have that energy and that um, collaboration and that kindness around me. It was like they were treating me like I was some kind of celebrity. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I love that. Wait, were you the, was it only you? So I was the only actor who's seen. There's a another actor who's just the voice of the the AI, who's another character, like the AI I interact with, like a robot, basically. Yeah, and that then is so cool. Yeah, and then I'm kind of gonna give away a spoiler, but there's a no, little... no, don't give it away, don't give it okay. away. <laughs> I do that. No, okay, okay. I'm... You should watch it. it you when should it comes out. tune in. You have to earn the giveaway. Okay. <laughs> so it'll be uh, streaming in the Toronto Fringe Digital uh, Festival. Oh, yay! Yes, yeah, yes. July okay. 21st to the 31st. So that's pretty soon. Oh, I gotta watch so many Fringe. What a. Yeah. I think I have all this time on my hands. What are you... <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'm hoping it'll uh, go on to that's... other festivals too because I think it's gonna look great. See, that's yeah. so that's so interesting because you can take technically a short different film, than theater in a sense. Put it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be kind of interactive theater type, whatnot. Put it in the fringe, but also submit it to film festivals, right? It, mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, this one wasn't like a play, um, you know, filmed. It was definitely a film, like the way it was written, the script and everything. So, yeah. There's going to be some special effects. There's going to be a potato that appears and disappears. It's going to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> you had me. And then for some reason, you had to bring in a potato. Hey, what didn't I have you at potato? No? No, no. no you? Potato ruined it. Now I'm not seeing it. You lost my support. <laughs> have you ever seen The Martian with uh, Matt Damon? I, I haven't. Is this is this your female Martian? Is this what's happening? <laughs> Well, he eats a lot of potatoes because that's oh, a okay, space okay. that you can eat. Then you can grow in space as potatoes. Yeah. I didn't realize I'd need a backstory to have a chat with you today, Hillary. So that's <laughs> on me. Yeah. I'll Do watch your history margin. of space travel. Come on, Robin. Uh, look, my version of travel is Back to the Future. That is my jam. I can oh, discuss that awesome. nonstop. But space travel, I'm not ready. <laughs> Even though technically, uh, no, they're not in space. They're they're in the sky. They're flying in a DeLorean. Da, da, da. Okay. <laughs> I love try. that movie. Okay. Oh, <laughs> what a movie! All right, wait, wait. Let me see what else I got in the bio. We discussed your headshots. I'm excited. Okay, headshots are terrifying for me, and I haven't. I, okay, mm -hmm. my last one was 2019. I contacted someone to do some new ones after I get my hair chopped. Uh, not as short as you, so we'll, we might not be competing against each other, uh, <laughs> which is upsetting. Um, I mean, maybe we'll get to go out as twins someday, so. We do, we <laughs> or sisters. Care. I never notice how similar till it's your face is here and I'm here. I'm a little more square and you're a little more oval. Um, okay, but, okay. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we're, we have brown eyes and brown hair. We're twins. There you go. Yeah. That's there we go. Practically sisters. That's, yeah. Wait, twins would be sisters. Okay, well, there you go. That's, yeah, but there's different levels of looking alike, right? Siamese <laughs> twins. That's what, oh my gosh. We're going to do sideshow together. That's what's going to happen. That's a musical for people that don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> three. Okay. Uh, two plus two. No, one plus one equals three. That is hilarious. Oh, that's so funny. You're getting a puppy? I didn't yes. read that part. See, I skimmed. <laughs> I saw the headshots See, and I saw back the sketchy one. Yeah, we're getting a puppy in oh August. Oh my gosh, so this is like, you're starting a family technically, right? Is that what people do? They get the dog to see if it works out, and then if it does... Well, we had a dog and a, and a cat, but they both have passed away. Oh, um, sorry. That's all right. Uh, the cat passed away maybe 2014, 15, mm -hmm. um, and then the dog just at the end of 2019, like in the fall of 2019, and we thought, oh, let's... 
let's hold off on getting another pet for a while. Let's do some traveling throughout 2020. And, oh. and then I, I booked a theater show and I was like, oh no, it's going to interrupt all the traveling that I'm going to be doing. And yeah, then I've, as you know, no, no dog, no travel, no theater, oh. <laughs> all that cut. So like everyone else. Yeah. What kind of theater? What was the hold. show? Oh, I'm so invested. Um, I was going to be doing at uh, Globus Theater, um, the uh, Norm Foster play, uh, the ladies, the, what oh, the was foursome? Called? The foursome one, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Is yeah. That, the, that golf one? Yeah, the golfing okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see that. I see that. Okay. Yeah. Anywho, that would have been fun to do, but one of those things. That... Are they coming? So what's happening with those, those offers you had? Are they great? Okay, you have no idea. Okay. I don't know what anything's happening in my life. <laughs> I, no, I was curious because I know some people, they had an offer and now it's opening up again and they've got those discussions now when it's going well, to happen I don't again. Know what's so, happening with all of theater, um, because I don't know when spaces are allowed to f officially open. It's different than the states, you know, where they know Broadway's opening at this yeah. date, this time. But I'm not sure, to be honest. Yeah. I do you like the ladies force them outdoors. Oh, that sounds disturbing. Again, for those joining, it is a play. That is play about golf. Yeah, confusing. Uh, the name's funny, honestly. The name alone would draw me to the show. No, so. Yeah, just curious. Yeah. How does it work? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not golf. That was a an inappropriate joke, Robin. <laughs> but you know what's interesting, Hillary? You had a cat, and then you turned dog. Did you not resonate with the cat? What happened? <laughs> no, I've actually, never met like a cat owner turned dog owner. So the, the cat and dog were alive at the same time. One just oh, died before the other. That's <laughs> well, interesting. We, we are both cat and dog people, my husband Whoa. and I. When I met him, he had the cat and the dog. And I think that was a seller for me of like, yeah, I, I like this man because uh, he likes cats and dogs. And the cat was diabetic and she needed needles twice a day. She was a high maintenance cat. Um, she lived a good, a good life. She was, she was uh, called, her name was Isis. Oh, <laughs> whoa. He was, that's how old she was. She was named before Isis existed. <laughs> like the terrorist group. She was named after the No, no, no. The I, I know. I'm, <laughs> that's I'm how, just picturing you calling your cat. cat lived. I mean, I, did you walk your cat? I've seen people do that and you crawl it, calling out Isis. Be careful. It, it's just... That's no, it was an indoor cat for sure. But uh, it was one of those yeah names where we had to explain this cat was named before. Um, you go to the vet checking in my cat Isis, and then yeah. everyone looks at you. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's and tough. then our our dog decoy. Um, ha! That's was, cute. Yeah, he was three, I guess, when when I first met Brandon many moons ago. So and he lived to be fourteen and a half. Yeah. And he's a, he was a big like Springer Spaniel. That's like fluffy old, old dog. We had to like carry him up the stairs near the end of his life. It was it was tough, but he was a good doggy. Yeah. Do you have a name for your future dog puppy? <laughs> Everyone asks me this, and you know what? Last night. Oh, wait, is this like you don't want to give away the name of a child? I don't want to rush you. You, you know what? I, okay. Last night on Father's Day was yesterday, and yeah. we played cards online with my in-laws, my mother and father-in-law, and we played canasta with them. And Brandon brought up the, you know, the dog That's name adorable. that we were thinking of. We have a list of like over a hundred names that we are, we sort we. We go back and forth on many, and we'll we'll decide when we actually get the dog. But there's one that I really like, and of course he said it last night, and they were like, "Oh, no, name it that." Oh no! <laughs> it's, like, oh. It is. it's like it's like baby names. You should it never is. tell I'm... people your baby's name before it's born no. because if you tell them before it's born, they're gonna be like, "Oh, no, don't do that. Don't pick that name because that sounds like this." And and they'll, all their judgments will come out. The, but Hillary, name, they tell you after as well, okay? But, they just tell you. Yeah. You're always wrong. You can't win. Yeah, you're, you're always wrong. But there's there's some people that are a little more polite when there's an actual child that's, that's there that has the name, and it's like, it's already on the birth certificate, okay? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nothing I can do. It's, uh, it's, government. it's, already it's on in the, the vet, government's okay? hands. <laughs> the vet already knows this, this dog, and it already <laughs> responds to this name, okay? Yes, it responds to the name. That's my... Yeah. I can't, I can't... What? I'm gonna trait, I can't do it. The puppy has chosen its name and we allow the puppy to decide its name 
does the puppy wait can I, i'm not trying to be ignorant maybe this is a bit of humor can the puppy choose its gender is that a thing i'm curious i, I, okay. don't, think, I don't think dogs do that <laughs> I, was, but I, mean, I mean i'm just i don't know okay uh, it, i don't think yeah i mean no <laughs> usually, yeah, not, uh, yeah. usually not with dogs i mean if it wants to wear certain things but usually dogs don't want to wear clothes at all so yeah. Yeah, but I, I always care. wondered if so much if of my boy dog to wants dress, to wear a skirt, so that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> dressing the animals seems very tedious. <clears throat> that's that's all I that's my thought. But it sounded like a question. There's no question. It just seems tedious. Period. That. <laughs> oh. Now, you, I, my dog. That's part of your costume trunk. That's a, that's a whole thing that I don't know if my dog you know, decides that it it's uh, like fellow boy dogs, maybe that'll be a thing. I don't know. But I don't know if it's going to have like a whole gender identity thing. <laughs> like, yes, I'm curious. I'm, I'm like are. trying to figure this out. And, and as I talk about it, again, not trying to offend, really just coming from a place of curiosity. Yeah. I'm just very curious about like species and how we interact. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. So that's uh, keep an eye out for that, Hillary. Please let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know. Oh, yeah. Robin, if my dog you. somehow tells me that it identifies differently than its biology, Let your yeah. dog name to be determined will say uh, <clears throat> bark bark Hillary. Please contact bark bark Robin. It's it's it has like a little thing in its throat. It doesn't bark. It just says bark because that's funny, and uh, <laughs> it would be a very weird conversation. But uh, that's gonna be odd. I'm gonna so, put your dog on an Instagram live. That's gonna be even weirder. Or I puppy. Mean, I, I'm, I'm aging your puppy. Your puppy. You know what? I bet you more people would tune in. <laughs> I know. I know. There are right? a lot of people tuning in though. So thank you for joining. No, no, it's true. But again, I, I think actually a lot of people watch it after the fact, just because that's why I don't care when I do the time, because everyone watches it after the fact. But, but there are a lot of people joining, so thanks. That's I great. know. I appreciate guys. Thanks for watching. We're just having yeah, a conversation. Yeah, watching live. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're you're interesting though, Hillary. You got to give yourself some credit. Everyone, every one of my guests goes, "No one's gonna watch me," and then I say, "I beg to differ." And then I will get at least one message going, "Wow, she was lovely." I'm like, oh, you don't know, "What Hillary. helps is we had a rainy morning, and so people are like, oh, it's all like wet outside, and I'll stay in and I'll look at my social media, and then oh, look at what's happening." <laughs> but I'm gonna tune today. in for one second so they think we're watching the whole thing. It's very <laughs> strategic. It's. But I, back to, to dogs on social media, I think they get way more yeah, views than, than actors even do, unless you're a famous actor. <laughs> I think I need to have, and that's why I, I try to use my niece for sketches, but again, she's in, you know, in the States. So oh. I can't really coordinate as well as I'd like to, but anytime I have a child, it gets so many more views. So I, and I said this <laughs> to, you know, my brother-in-law. Children and animals, yeah. I got a, they also have a dog, so I gotta figure out how to use the dog. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, but maybe when mm -hmm. they are allowed to cross the border, then I'll then I'll then that's what I'm gonna be influencer status of just doing sketches of filming them. I mean, I also don't want to be influencer status. I don't want to influence people. Make your own decisions. There you go. You've been uninfluenced. It happened. <laughs> I revoked the influence. Are you doing? Have you been doing any sketches uh, in during the pandemic? I've I mean, been trying. Early on, to, right? Yeah, I've definitely been trying to, and I think as I've been going more towards like TikTok, whatnot, and keeping it, I just find it, it like it has to be so short now, otherwise no one watches it. Mm -hmm. So a part of me is dying on the inside because I like it. I, I find I need at least a one and a half, two minute sketch. That's what I find it needs. So I think, again, I've been writing all this stuff, but I haven't put it to film yet. So that it's- Well, that's great though that you've been writing it. I'm trying. And uh, there's always time to film it in a, in a nice safe way in the future right exactly. um, so exactly. it's it's challenging we have yeah a lot of extra challenges now so well, that's why I have I know, yeah when I used you and I did that whole thing that was again love the people I work with it was just so tedious to collect everything oh, so gosh. I wanted to do another one I have this great idea and then I'm trying to work it out and I'm like oh this is not this good because I also want to add like a musical parody component I go this is going to be an utter fail with people's audio. So I have to revamp that and then just redo it later on if need be. But it's so upsetting because you know when you have a creative vision and you just, this is what it has to be and you go, oh, it can't be that way. Okay, how can I modify? So yeah, yeah. obstacles are, yeah, they suck. And then sometimes they are good because they will make you be more creative in a sense. Like if you're like, oh, we can't actually film in this location anymore. 
So now we have to kind of rewrite the script. We have to rewrite this character, but then something new can come of that sometimes. So it can sometimes uh, sprout, yeah, creativity when you have crappy obstacles. And yeah, this pandemic has certainly been an obstacle <laughs> for that most artists. Yeah. In but I, I love that you have, again, if this is even before I collaborate with you on time, and it was the cackle comedy. I love that name. I've oh, never fully cackled. I don't know what that would sound like unless I'm playing a witch. And I cackle. <laughs> That's a cackle to me. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, that was great. But is that, are you a cackler? Is that how they Yeah, like okay. that sound to me is like a cackle, like ha ha, like bleh. it's like an old witchy sound, um, but also just like a throaty laugh. And I do that sometimes and my, my husband will say, you're cackling again, you know? So that is what inspires the name. I love that. Because I've, I've never really heard someone use the word cackle, but I oh, know really? what a cackle is. Yeah, you know, oh, it's like a hearty laugh or something and yeah. a belly laugh or something. But the cackle should come back. There's something to the cackle. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very um, aggressive laugh, <laughs> you know. Um, and when I first named it cackle comedy, um, a lot of people called it crackle. Because if you, like we were saying earlier, callback, um, people skim through things really quickly and they don't fully read words. So actually, uh, I did think it was crackle too. Yeah, I, totally I, did. I, I think added an R and I don't do. know why. There, there was a streaming site or something called Crackle um, oh. with a CR, and there's also like Snap Crackle Pop, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. So that's a word that's in our brain, you know, from our childhood. Love so I, I totally get it. Um, but so many times people would say crackle and they'd say it like a few times and I'd like try to get into the conversation of, oh, just so you know, it's, it's cackle, you know. <laughs> it's one of those things where you get called Heather a few times and it's like, oh, actually, my name's Hillary. Yeah, just so you know, and you don't want to like, <laughs> you don't want to embarrass somebody, but yeah. No, see so you, you say that. To, you right. have to correct him. You have to, for your name, you have to, there was a, I remember there was someone I work with and we had finished the production and he said, guys, by the way, this is my actual name. Yeah. See, that's, that's a little too long to wait, right? You yeah. Gotta... That's too long as Indy. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> Cause yeah. now I feel we have not been <laughs> addressing you correctly. And then there's just this awkward way that we're leaving you. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. New name person. Weird. Yeah. Uh, but also I feel terrible, right? Because I feel I wanted them to feel valued. But how can you feel valued if I won't even learn your correct name? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. But um, so guys, it's cackle. Do not call it crackle comedy. <laughs> Going back to where that story started. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's one of those things where like, I just know it's coming. So it, it doesn't bother me because it's obviously one of those things where it's popular. Like my husband's name is Brandon. Um, but he will get called Brennan. Brendan, you know, it's one of those names where in the 80s and 90s, so many men were given a name very similar to that. And so it's easy to mix it up. So he just, he doesn't even correct people. <laughs> he just goes on with it. He's like, whatever, That's, don't care. See I, see, I struggle even when someone spells my name with an I, I go, okay, first off, hello, <laughs> you are emailing me and it is clearly my name with a Y. So you got That's, the email. It's right. weird when people write the name wrong when they see it right in front of them that is an odd thing and i, I get that too with hillary that one l Double versus l's? two l's yeah. i'm i have one l we're, we're one l i made sure okay thanks yeah i mean it's one of those things again where i just let it go because whatever unless you're you're writing my name on a poster or something that's where i care about my name being spelled right but if it's just an email or something whatever i'll be like hillary clinton she's done a lot more in her life than me <laughs> Absolutely. When I was writing your name, I thought it was Hillary. Yes. I actually thought of Hillary Clinton. I go, wait, how does Hillary? That's the go-to. That's the go-to. Uh, I thought she People try to remember well. my name. They say Hillary. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Go, yeah. I mean, I really. I've only met like maybe a couple other Hillarys. Other. I think it's a very unique name. I like it, and I see that you go by Hill. Do you go by H? Lorraine? Oh, I go by Hill for sure. Not H, but um, H squared. Somebody call me because I have H H. <laughs> cute that's cute yeah but usually hillary yeah but i'm or some i had a person call me juni because of my middle name and i have a friend who has two children and their her first born is a boy named ellery and her second born is a little girl named juni 
<laughs> I was like, you're just naming your children after me in different ways, aren't you? <laughs> oh man, you get the third one and it's heart. And then you go, okay, now we draw the yeah, line. Exactly. Too far. Okay. Ellery, Junie, art. <laughs> Or fart, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's just uh, cruel parenting. But maybe it'll be cool in five years. And then a fart is no longer a fart. It's actually a farté. That's how you pronounce it. Oh, that is weird. OK, I like to think of different ways I can mess kids up. This is, again, why I'm not a parent. Naming them something disturbing like that is really funny. <laughs> oh, it's very funny. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier my husband's name is McFarlane, and my name is Hart. And so sometimes I joke, oh, if we have a kid, I'll combine the names together and people think oh Hart McFarlane I'm like no what if you put Hart right in the middle McFartlin <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah I was yeah, actually I like, picturing I really dumb jokes like that no no but I was and actually I picturing that people don't know that it's Hart and they just assume that you're always saying yeah okay you Hart McFarlane okay we get it you love McFarlane it's a lot stop it you know because people so yeah Hart you what? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I was talking to some young people recently. That's how they spoke to me. It was very confusing. I, yeah. So there you yeah, go. I learn a lot from uh, my students, I right? because I teach online uh, voice lessons and piano lessons, and yeah, I get to learn not only the new songs of today that I didn't know or songs that are from a certain video game I'd never heard of, um, but I also yeah, I get to hear a little bit of today's slang every now and then. I'm like, oh yeah, teenagers have a whole other. Yeah, I still spill the tea is still the most confusing one for me. I because I I never want to spill tea. So when someone goes, okay, spill the tea, it just I'm like it's hot, it'll stain. I don't like <laughs> the connotation of what spill the tea is supposed to be. That one really mm -hmm. bothers me. But yeah. again, I'm just that old person in my generation going. Back in my day, we just yeah. said share a story. So that's happens to all of us. We're all getting old, and we all yeah are gonna do that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up words, what does this mean? Okay, well, oh yeah, I totally understood what this acronym is. Heart, oh, no, that, that meant to be sad face. Gosh darn it, okay, yeah. Well, I'm aging myself on this live, so that was fun. Uh, that's what happens when we chat with comedians. Okay, I think you're very funny. Uh, okay, so we've discussed, I think we discussed everything, which is, I'm so, oh, one last thing, yes. And it was at the bottom and I did a star next to it, okay. I have to discuss your Stellara commercial for a couple reasons. Number one, my friend was in one of the versions too, and she, I'm very happy for the buyouts. Good job. <laughs> it's been on for a couple of years. I'm very happy for everyone in that. I know they replaced it recently and I made it, like, made, yeah. it made me really sad. But for this know, audition, I'm, 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 where you are standing in a tennis court. Did you need to know, number one, how to play tennis? Number two, come dress as a tennis player. And number three, did you even know what Stellara is for? And those are my no. questions. So first of all, um, I auditioned for that at, yeah, Jigsaw was casting it, and it was Project Disappear, because yes. you don't know what the product is. Yeah, you don't. You audition. Most of the time, you don't, unless it's a very famous food thing with a very famous, like, line, ba -da -ba -da, you know, like, yeah, then you know what you're auditioning for. Okay. Yeah, or McDonald's. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Jokes. It's uh, <laughs> it's what happened. Just maybe not. Okay. Didn't land. Crash and bam. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I was auditioning for the office scene. Um, and I was dressed in a uh, pencil skirt and a white shirt. And it was a callback. And they said, "Do you know how to play tennis?" Uh, and I said, "Yes, actually, I do. I play every summer. I grew up playing with my brothers." And they said, could you pretend you're hitting a few balls? And so like with a pretend racket in my hand and like, you know, doing my serves and everything. Um, and then I got cast in that part and that was awesome. And then the, the shoot was at like six o'clock in the morning um, in December, 2019. Uh, and it was in an indoor giant, you know, tennis court area. So it was cold, but it was fine when you're running around hitting tennis balls and the director and the, and I think the producer or another guy, they were twin brothers and they were so cute. Cause they're like guys in their late fifties or sixties or something. Pardon me if your age is younger. Um, and they kept throwing balls at me and taking turns with me hitting it back to them. And I would just whack them as hard as I wanted to. And sometimes I would hit the crane and sometimes I'd hit a person. <laughs> so 
fun. And none of those shots are in I know, the, that's why I'm laughing. That's none of that is in it. You I'm just standing, standing there. on the tennis court. No one's hitting the ball back. Yeah. And I, I feel in my heart of hearts, I thought, sh I bet you she knows how to play tennis. She had to know how to play tennis to play I had that. to show all my skills. I had to, yeah. I even showed them some perfect serves and everything. Yeah. None of that's in the, in the commercial because, as you know, there's several different spots in the commercial, and that's only one moment. They have some really nice, like, crane shots, close-ups, which looks great. Um, and the point of that moment is that my um, – my partner, my, my tennis partner, has dropped their racket and is running to the bathroom because they have Crohn's disease and they need to take Stellara. I don't know how they're supposed to gather all that, but you know, eyes had to had to tell that story. <laughs> I so my friend was in the office scene and yeah. I watched it I for the longest time and I'm saying this whatever I thought it was for erectile dysfunction that is what I thought it was for I'm not even joking I, and then to a point where I looked it up and I had to know and I go that's what it's for why why did you get erectile dysfunction from because tennis there was no the one there like you know how they always do Cialis there's water overflowing right everyone's too busy to go about their daily lives so I thought okay why would this person sign up to play tennis and then get a little <laughs> I'm gonna go in the lobby and uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's the tennis <laughs> lobby. <laughs> I don't know the change room. That's what I meant to say. Uh, so yeah, it is not. It is for Crohn's. There, you, there you go. I like to ruin yeah. commercials. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't worry. I had many questions from many people saying, "So what is that for?" <laughs> Yeah. Then they tried to redo one in between the set because I've been on the lookout for this one because I wanted to know. What, and then they tried to redo it in between to explain exactly what it was. And then they pretty much redid what you've done, but with a little bit of a different music for the newest one. Yeah. And I thought, why did you redo that? Hillary was great. So was my other friend. No. <laughs> Thanks. So I was upset for you guys. Right. right. I'm ready to move on to some new ads, though. So I'm, I'm happy to not oh, be stuck in that. You right. know what I mean? Like, if, if you're stuck as that person, then it's No, I don't know what you mean. Stuff. I don't. No, Hillary. <laughs> okay. Not all is booked. Okay. The one that's you're... booked, I've been cut out of. So no, no, I do not resonate with that. Or it plays, and it plays on channels that I never get to see, and people go, hey, I saw you. I go, cool, I don't. I'll take your word for it. And then I go, oh, I think I saw it on YouTube. Oh, my God, I'm a star. Uh, but no, it's not. It's not like you're on television. You're always, I was so excited. And sometimes it's just you, and I go, it's Hillary. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Yeah, I get so many messages from like people in BC that I met when I was 15 that said, hey, I saw you in a commercial. <laughs> yeah. And I've been in many commercials, but that one is like right in my face. So well, yeah, because it's only you in that scene. In that right? shot, yeah. so that's, where else am I going to look? Hmm. And sometimes when it's multiple people, I go, I take in new people at different times. But this is this is Hillary. She plays tennis. Oh, hmm. but not really. You don't see it. You can't even use it for a skills reel. It's annoying. <laughs> but yeah, way to go. Way to, way to book that one. That's... Hey, I mean, as you know, it just was like a so, fluke. That moment. Um, picture, I'm it, picturing it, you it, in the audition at the callback in office gear trying to play yeah, tennis. Yeah, playing tennis. And I think that's really funny. Skirt. Yeah. That's so funny. Oh, I love auditions. I miss them. <laughs> I miss <laughs> the in-person ridiculous. I mean, I don't because I, traveling there and back was kind of annoying. I understand. But, yes. Yeah. I do too. I miss that energy and that another human being interacting with you and also letting it go because when you are auditioning at home by yourself and you you do a couple takes and you watch it back and you're like oh god i gotta do it again and then, oh, i don't want to do one more i just want to do one more and you're like i don't have time i gotta get you know move on to this other audition or blah 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 and it's just like you you have to live with your face in your own face and <laughs> it's hard it's hard with this because I never realized what I look like when I audition for commercials till I have to film myself and go, that's what I've been doing in the room? Dear God. And then you go, okay, I guess I, at least I get a couple other takes. And then you go, oh, no, it's not any better. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah, there comes a point where you just have to let it go and you just got to move on and say, hey, it's just another one. And uh, I'm going to get another audition eventually and I'll do that one as best I can in the moment. But yeah, when you're in person... You don't, you don't get another take. I mean, you usually get two takes and then you just go and you don't think about it anymore. Whereas when you have to edit it together and you have to launch yourself again, you're like, maybe I could just do one more. 
oh god or you just tell yourself no i'm gonna just move on or you think oh this is the best fucking shit that anybody's ever gonna see and then you don't even and then you don't even get a call back yeah you go did you not like my genius choice did you see what i did Mm, mm, it didn't resonate interesting Mm, mm, okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh that's so funny Oh, well, I guess yes, this is lovely. Friends okay. coming in here. Hello. <laughs> Are we wrapping up though? <laughs> I was going to. We can keep going. You can say no, hi to people. Right. Okay. I they was wrapping up because I don't want to take up your whole day. It. Pardon? They, they can watch it and skim through it when it's uh, not live, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll promote it. I'll add capital comedy. Uh, I forgot to tag them last right. time. The poster. That's on me. Is there any that's other right. ads? I think that's all I had to add. Uh, let's let's promote the sound of space. Yes, do they have an Instagram account? Oh, that's a great question. I have no idea. Okay. Um, (laughs) I know that. I'll do a little clip from the the Summit Space because that story was really cool. And we're sharing with all the viewers. This is how we decide on the clip to share. We're going to share the Sound of Space because it's a great idea. And I feel like we're going to help all the little people that own the, what are they called? What are those spaces called? The The escape room. Escape room. Thank you. (laughs) The spaces with the room. Uh, that you escape from escape rooms yes that makes sense okay yes i really um, want to film something there now you motivated me i have to find something cool do they have how okay for an escape room do they have previews of this is what each room is do they yes. change okay that's yeah I'm so thinking. if you go into uh proxima command.com i sent you a link you did i'll put it on instagram it doesn't work oh it does have thank you Ty- oh tyler morgan oh, hi, tyler. no way tyler <laughs> we're discussing your yeah. film Okay. Yay. That's good. They have an Instagram and they also have a video on their website that shows the whole room um, in a really cool way with this little promo video that they made once upon a time. So you get to see all the, the cool screens and buttons and lights. I like it. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I got three things to tag. You're just doing too much. And also, if you need lessons, go to Hillary. Are you yeah, full? Piano Are you done? Are you full for the summer? Are you taking new people? Um. During the summer, I will be teaching sporadically. I have some students doing RCM exams, that sort of thing. Some oh. adult students that I'll continue teaching online. And then I'm hoping, come September, I will be back to in-person teaching. Uh, we'll see. Uh, my hope is yes, because I miss live music as opposed to music through my headphones. Yeah. That's fair. That is the thing. Yeah, if you want to um, sign up for music lessons with me, just check out my website. I have a whole page about my teaching. And you can email me or message me through hillaryjunehart.ca. Look at me. I'm self-promoting. You were, And then you threw the thing at the end. I was believing you, and then you're like, that <laughs> And then I got all Canadian. <laughs> like, sorry. No, I hate promoting myself. I promote other people because yeah. that's easier for me. So, yes. <laughs> Hillary, any fi- oh, should we do? I love asking for final thoughts, final words, because it's awkward, and I like to end awkwardly. That's just how I do it. So, any final thoughts, final words you'd like to share with the group, the viewers, people watching this after the fact, people just listening? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Anything, anything to say about my hair? Look at it; it's like a bush growing in this humidity. My- it just looks very healthy, actually. I'm very invested in this. I would do a video just of your hair. Like you could oh, do one of those pants and look at what this today. shampoo has done to my hair. Look at how vivacious it is. I think it would be very fun to do a shampoo commercial. Like, oh, look at me on my hair. That would be very fun. But you say that, I worry what the chemicals are that they put in there to make it look that shiny. And then you go, oh God, Gorilla Glue? <laughs> and then, no, that was another, okay. Uh, did you hear about that woman that used Gorilla Glue? for? Yep, sure shampoo? did. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a choice. Okay. Tiger King, Gorilla Glue. Yeah, I, I remember the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I heard. So I don't really follow things all the time. And I heard about it after the fact, like maybe six months after the fact. So it's just, well, I'm still processing it apparently. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay, final plug July 21st to July 31st is the Toronto Digital Fringe. And that's where you can see the sound of space. And I haven't seen it yet because it's still in editing, of course. And I am very excited to see what that film will be. And I hope you are too, anyone who watches this. <laughs> so everyone watch, go to the fringe. Go, oh, oh my gosh, go to the fringe is such a reflex. Watch the fringe, go to your laptop, 
where the fringe will be. Desktop as well. There's options. There's two options. I'm excited to see it though. Thanks, Robin. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much for having me. Of it's course. So nice to, it's so nice to interact with you. And I mean, every time I've ever chatted with you, it's like you're you're such a good conversationalist person. That's that's a word. Yeah. So thank I, you. I believe it. Conversationalist person is yeah, now conversationalist a person. I was a person. Okay. Uh, Converse shoes, that was me. So I could talk to people about shoes. Okay, well, now that I'm not funny anymore, we end the live. <laughs> but thank you all for watching. Hillary, thank you so much for joining. I will post and promote accordingly and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great summer. And uh, yeah, looking forward to watching all your stuff. Thank Bye. you so much. Okay. Bye.